Hello, shipmates. I'm Vice Admiral John Mustin, Chief of Navy Reserve and Commander Navy Reserve Force. Today, we're kicking off the first of a four-part video series on the implementation of the Navy Reserve fighting instructions. I'm proud to share that we have a very special guest with us today to initiate this important effort, our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Mike Gilday. Admiral, I appreciate your interest in the important work we're doing. Thanks so much for joining us today. For 245 years, in both calm and rough waters, our Navy has stood the watch to protect the homeland, preserve freedom of the seas, and defend our way of life. Since its inception in 1915, reserve sailors have provided vital support to our Navy and to our nation, and have ensured our fleet has been ready to fight and win, no matter the challenge. Today, our reserve sailors operate across the fleet, day in and day out. They are deployed to COVID hotspots across our country, working in our shipyards, and at each of our numbered fleets and combatant commands. John, the Navy Reserve fighting instructions you and your team issued to the force provide a clear path forward to warfighting readiness, which no doubt is our number one priority. You see, our reserve force can't simply be regarded as a 911 force. Reserve sailors must be ready to augment our Navy team when and where needed to help shoulder the load in key mission areas and to fill critical capability gaps. Make no mistake, our reserve force, nearly 110,000 strong, are vital to the success of our Navy. And I have no doubt that our reserve force will be ready on arrival when and where the nation calls on you. And for that, you have my thanks. Roger that, thanks CNO. The fighting instructions support your NAV plan and they focus the entirety of the reserve force on my number one priority, warfighting readiness. We've distilled our vision and the road ahead into three lines of effort. We're gonna transform how we design, train, and mobilize the force. The design the force line of effort will identify warfighting capabilities best suited for the reserve component in line with Navy requirements and maximize the value of all reserve equities. It's a whole scale look at how we're designed and it's gonna result in organizational, structural, managerial, and administrative changes, all to optimize warfighting readiness. The train the force line of effort emphasizes mobe to billet activities, which focus training and every second of time spent in uniform to prepare sailors to excel in their mobilization billets. This is distinct from traditional unit mobe training requirements. It also supports the reduction of involuntary individual augmentee mobilizations for non-maritime land-based commitments and significant work on fit-fill assessment and reporting. The Mobilize the Force line of effort is transforming and implementing processes to activate the entirety of our reserve force in 30 days, which is what our commanders require of us in a great power competition. To achieve this end state, we developed a concept we call distributed activation, which I'm happy to report is already at initial operational capability. In fact, we're applying it to the demo of our surge main sailors as we speak. That capability will be fully operational in January of 22 in conjunction with the launch of the Navy Personnel and Pay System, NP2. Stay tuned, we have three more short videos coming that dive deeper into each of these three critical lines of effort. Team, you're doing great work and you make me proud every day. That said, we've got a lot to do and the right leaders in place to make it happen. I'm counting on you to help make these plan changes a reality the world isn't waiting and our transformation is urgent. Let's get busy out there.